Thank you for watching this video and enjoying one of our Wednesday breakfast group meetings. Yeah. Good morning, gentlemen, and good morning. it's good to see all of you. It's good to see you. Uh, I apologize for having to run in and run out. I had to go out there and make sure I got my coffee cup and my rabbit's foot just so I could have some good luck being able to talk to you guys today because, you know, you're, you're a hard group to talk to. <clears throat> so, um, I, uh, I have a, uh, I've been challenged with a, uh, a set of lyrics that I'm going to share with you guys, and then I, I found some passages of scripture to be able to share with some of the things, what I got to read in each one of the, each one of the different lines that they sang. Um, it's from uh, Casting Crowns, it's uh, mm -hmm. Jesus at a Distance. Um, so let me, uh, let me start first by being able to pray. <clears throat> well, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much. Lord, I want to, uh, to give you thanks for everything. Lord, everything in my life. You have, uh, you have brought me so far, and you have been with me always in my, in my failures, my shortcomings, in my, in my victories. You, you have blessed me for things that I didn't deserve. You've given me, you brought love into my life with marriage, a uh, long life of marriage of 30 years, and, and then you give, has given me a love now for the past six years. You blessed me with children. You've saved me from car wrecks and, and critical surgeries that I could have easily died and gone to heaven when I was an infant, yet you were there always. So Lord, I just want to thank you for everything, for you are worthy of all praise, and I'm so thankful for you. And I pray that you will speak through this message to these guys, all of these that are here today, and that uh, you will impact their lives as much as you have impacted mine. I love you. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Uh -huh. So um, let me uh, let me read through the the lyrics of the song, and then I'll go back and start uh, sharing some points that I'd like for you guys to be able to consider, and then we'll talk about those things. Jesus at a distance. It says, uh, I've been keeping Jesus at a distance, so afraid to let him get too close. To the two lives I've been living as if he couldn't see them both. Close enough to feel the warmth of the fire, yet far enough away for me to hide. But I'm tired of walking the wire between the darkness and the light. I was offered resurrection, but I settled for the grave. I had the chance to walk on water, but I chose to play it safe. I've been hiding from the healer. I thought my wounds were out of reach, but at the end of all my running, you are still running after me. So no more Jesus at a distance, no more pushing you away. I don't want to settle for the back row of some Sunday morning faith. So I'm holding nothing back now because because I'm because cause there's nothing you don't see. No more Jesus at a distance. Come change every part of me. When I uh, when I read these verse, when I read this these lyrics, and I started to pull out some of the just the the impactful notes in them. The first two were, you know, I've been keeping Jesus at a distance, so afraid to let him get too close. It, it, it reminded me of how I need to admit that I've been keeping Jesus at a distance, that I have kept him at a distance in the past. 
and I'm doing my very best not to do that anymore. I know what my life looked like in doing that by pushing him back and saying, hey, listen, I've got this right now. You know, I, uh, you know, I appreciate you or putting, putting that, putting his word up on the shelf and only pulling it down when I need it. But being able to take that, that Bible, his word and put it in front of me on a daily basis is changing my life. It's making a difference. It's helping me to be able to draw closer to Him. And I just, you know, I, again, what I want to be able to pass on, not only to my children, but to others that I meet. I recently went to a get-together with some friends through my, yes, through my wife. It's a good friend of hers that lives up in North Carolina. We went to a Halloween party, so it was, you know, a razzmatazz of all kinds of different people that were there. But I had our, on the way up there, we were talking about some of the circumstances some of the people are going through right now. There was, there was one particular family that has a son that's 16 years old that has seizures all the time. And they, the, the wife stays home. The mother stays at home. He's 16 years old. But there's so much fear of what will happen because it comes on so suddenly and she wants to be able to be there. So the husband works all the time. And then she takes care of her son. And I saw her at the party and got to talk to her just a little bit. You know, with all the racket and the, the everything that's going on all around us, it was still, thank you, it was still to where you can take the time to be able to just have a quiet conversation because, see, what God puts in us is compassion. See, in, in Colossians 3, it starts in verse 12. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, with gentleness, with humility and patience. He's given us those virtues to because we raised our hand. We, we committed our lives. We admitted that we've kept Jesus away from us. And we want Him closer now. But to admit that we've that we need Him to draw close to Him as He draws close to us. So that sec the second lyric says, to the two lives I've been living, to the two lives that I've been living as if He couldn't see them both. I mean, how... <laughs> you know, for me, it, it would be... So you know about that. It's 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 like, you know, for me it was. I, I just I just thought you only knew me through when I was, you know, in church, uh, or, you know, singing in the car to the praise songs on the radio, not what I'm doing in the world. But you can see the two lives I've been living. So in Psalm 33, um, th there's some verses that I've shared with you guys in the past that uh, that my wife and I started to try to to, to uh, remember. And it and it in Psalm 33, starting in verse four, it says, uh, uh, "The word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust in everything He does. He loves whatever is just and good." The unfailing love of the Lord fills the whole earth. And, and those are verses that my wife and I worked on to be able to try to, to memorize. But these verses that came to me from this here, I, you know, I started to read through Psalm 33 a little bit more because those verses right there were impactful. And you know, as, as, you, as you read in it, it says that, that the Lord's plans, the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions will never, can never be shaken. What joy to a nation whose God is the Lord, whose people He has chosen as His inheritance. And then those words go on further and it says, The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. 
he sits at his throne and sees he it says from his throne he sees all who live on the earth all not some not just the jewish people not just the the gentiles not just the christians not just he sees all and it says because he made their hearts so he understands everything they do the two lives i've been living as if he couldn't see them both he sees everything we do always he knows our hearts. He created them. He made them. Close enough to feel the warmth of the fire, yet far enough away for me to hide. We know where to get close enough to feel the warmth of the fire, yet we still go away, walk away from it, and be able to hide from it. Oh, I can stay warm on my own. I'm okay. I don't need any more than this. I'm doing enough. In John 7, verses 1 through 13, it's a, it was, it's such a cool story. And it's, it has things in it that I hadn't, hadn't read maybe I just read through it but hadn't read it so I want to share it with you it says Jesus traveled around Galilee he wanted to stay out of Judea where the Jewish leaders were plotting his death but soon it was time for the Jewish Jewish festival of shelters and Jesus brothers said to him this is Jesus brothers and Jesus disciples leave here and go to Judea where the party is where your followers can see your miracles you can't become famous if you hide like this if you can do such wonderful things show yourself to the world for even his brothers didn't believe in him Jesus replied, Now is not the right time for me to go, but you can go anytime. The world can't hate you, but it does hate me because I accuse it of doing evil. You go on. I'm not going to the festival because my time has not come yet. After saying these things, Jesus remained in Galilee. But after his brothers left for the festival, Jesus also went, though secretly, staying out of public view. The Jewish leaders tried to find him at the festival and kept asking if anyone had seen him. There was a lot of grumbling about him among the crowds. Some argued he's a good man, but others said he's nothing but a fraud who deceives the people. Verse 13 is what I was trying to get to. Verse 13 of John 7. But no one, no one had the courage to speak favorably about him in public. For they were afraid of getting in trouble with the Jewish leaders. How true that is in our lives as well and in this time. When there's so much distress and so many difficult so much evil that's so evident everywhere and yet we must take a stand of what is right in what that scripture does say the evidence even through this passage here in John 7 is that even his disciples <laughs> that, that part just blew me away you can't become famous unless you get out there and start showing it off. Come on, Jesus. You can do it all. Just get out there and show everybody what it is. Then they'll, then they'll get it. But that's not why He came. 
He came to seek and to save lives. He didn't come here to draw any attention to himself. He, he, t- he calls for us to, to resemble him, to imitate him in everything that he has done. To lay down our lives for our brother. To be able to, to think of others above yourselves. To be last instead of first. Those, that's what his calling is. And yet, even when he did all of that, all of those things, no one had the courage to speak favorably about him in public. Everyone was too afraid of what others would say. Isn't it that feeling? It's that I, I don't want to say anything. No courage. Close enough to feel the warmth of the fire, far enough away for me to hide. But I'm tired of walking the wire between the darkness and the light. In Psalm 112, verse 4, it says, Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. And then, as Psalm 112 goes a little further, in verse 5 it says, Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely they will not be shaken, for the righteous will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is secure. They will have no fear. For in the end, they will look in triumph over their foes. That's Psalm 112, verses 5 through 8. I'm tired of walking the wire between the darkness and the light. I was offered resurrection, but I settled for the grave. In Psalm 94, 16 through 19, who stood up for me against the wicked? Who took my side against evil workers? If God hadn't been there for me, I never would have made it. The minute I said, I'm slipping, I'm falling, your love, O oh God, took hold and held me fast. When I was upset and beside myself, you calmed me down and cheered me up. Mark Delaney is genuinely one of the most dedicated men and witnesses for Jesus. His messages always are so meaningful and apply to so many parts of our Christian walk today. 